Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over. And man, do I have a great one for you today. So this is a session between myself and Jenny Poulos, one of our amazing coaches here at Act Dental. And this is one of the most important concepts I've ever, ever learned in business. And I learned it from a great guy, a great coach of mine. His name was Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach. And he shared with me a tool, a principle called the 80% approach. Since learning about it, then since applying it, which it took me a while to apply, and you're going to see why in this episode, it has changed my life. And I hope it changes your life too, because your biggest enemies are perfectionism and procrastination. This is the perfect tool to do battle with your enemies. So hope you enjoy the episode. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome to an incredible session. Uh, this is going to be a podcast and a webinar. So if you're joining us on one of those fronts, welcome, because you're going to enjoy this. I've got Jenny Poulos. How are you, Jenny? I'm well. I love being here with you, Kirk, as always. Well, you're going to see you guys are listening. If you're watching, um, you're going to see she's the smart one in the group. So uh, well, she keeps us keeps me on the rails here and uh, describing this concept. But we're going to share with you one of the most important concepts we have ever learned in our business. And as we're coaching dentists, now we're a coaching company. We coach dentists all over the United States and even a few in Canada. And one of the things that we've learned is how to help them create um, systems, how they need to get organized, make progress in your dental practice. And one of the challenges with many dentists is they just can't make progress. They can't get organized. You know this. Like part of your sanity is making sure there's high levels of predictability and you have systems in place in your practice. And you've tried it before. And the problem is, is trying to get organized and making progress in your, your practice, you're like trying to get it perfect. And that is a huge challenge in a dental practice. Sometimes you just got to get started. And I'll share with you where the solution came from. But Jenny, you run, you're not only a coach here, but you also run a fabulous practice in the Denver area. Just share a little bit about what you do and who you are. Yep. So Jenny Poulos, amazing to be here with you guys. Um, I have the blessing of being a part of the ACT team and being a coach, sharing um, all of the experience that I have gained over, gosh, like 20 plus years now, managing and working in a perio practice in Denver. So I am in the trenches and I get to share that with teams and I get to learn from the amazing teams that I'm with every day also. Um, I love this concept um, because I'm sure of all of you dentists that are listening out there right now, um, none of you are perfectionists or type A personalities or want everything to be perfect all of the time. And certainly that never holds you back. Yeah. I'm guessing it's never been an issue for you. Oh my this gosh. concept, oh my gosh, um, it helps us move through that issue in an amazing way. And it's freeing. That's yeah. Really what it is. Very freeing. And as many concepts, I'll tell you exactly where I got it from. I got it from this guy. And, you know, full transparency, this is a trademarked concept from strategic coach. And so I'm going to encourage you to read the book and we're just going to quote straight from the book. And I know Dan really well. I was in his coaching program and uh, one of the things uh, it's called the strategic coach coaching program. And I was in the 10X program. And uh, when he shared this concept, I was like, holy moly, this is going to change my life. And he said this about his organization. I'll say it about mine. A lot of tools we create, we create them because we need them too. And wow. so um, this was a big leap and, uh, you know, and jump for us 
with the 80% approach. And we'll put links to how you can find those resources in there. But the, one of the biggest challenges that people have, and dentists, and you mentioned this, is perfectionism and procrastination. Y- you know, I, I've, I have it too. And it's like, we got to write this system up. We got to get it all right. And, you know, got to get it perfect. And, you know, first of all, I don't have the time to do it. And so, and then secondly, I'm not the one that needs, you know, you know to do it perfectly because I'll mess it up every single time and it slows the process down. So Jenny, you see, this is a huge challenge in dentists. In the it practices. is a huge challenge. And when, when I first heard this concept that like really think about perfectionism and procrastinate, procrastination is essentially the same thing. They are keeping you back from progress. Yeah. And it was just this huge light bulb moment that if we can let go of this need to get everything to 100% before we hit play, before we hit go, we make so much more progress. Um, and, and the reality is sometimes we have to let it go at 80% to even know if it works, yeah. right? If we spend all of this time on the, on the little details, um, and sometimes we have to get something into action to even know what the little details are. Um, and that's true for systems in the office a lot of times. Yeah. And so if you're listening as a dentist, you know how this works. Jenny, what she just said is absolutely true. And if you're like me, you overfunction with the details and you're completely exhausted. So you write all these things, you do all the details. You're like, why am I so wiped out? It's because you're not good at these things and they cause challenges. Now, the tool that we're going to give you is, and again, it's life changing. It's the 80% approach. But as you start to use it, what you're going to do is you're going to push back. Now, this is a graphic. If you're watching the video, you can see that it's a graphic where he describes you keep using this tool over and over again against your two enemies which are got to get it perfect and I am procrastinating and refusing to take action and as you continuously take action and we'll show you how this works and you lean into it every week it increases your confidence it increases your practices confidence it increases your team's confidence where they actually look at you and they go hey, we might be able to do this. And then there's a certain point you go, whoa, we're doing this. And um, then you don't wait to take action at all because there are sometimes you just look around, you're like, I don't need any more ideas. We just need <laughs> execution here. So, yep. yeah. So let's You start jump- getting things done and everyone's like, oh my gosh, we can check that off the list. We can totally. do it. We yeah. got this. It's amazing. I freaking love it. So, you know, if you're listening in the car, It's a whole different deal. You can think of a big box that's 100% of the task. And sometimes you don't even know the limits to the task. So before I start it, you know, I'm at 0%. But think about this. If you're listening right now, watching, you're like, I got to get something done. And you spend the next five minutes sketching on a piece of paper and go, all right. And then you get it to 80%. This is what I want it to look like. You have now accomplished 80% of the task. You've given us the outline, the drawing, at least the outcomes of what it's going to look like. And now you can be done with it and move on. Now, the challenge I've had is like, okay, I got it to 80%. And then I leave it at 80%. And then it goes on and on and on. But think about this. If you're, uh, so I'm an eye on the disc profile. I love ideas. I love concepts. I have a disease. I can't stop thinking about how things could be better. It's a constant disease. I've taken the Colby test many times. And my follow through score is again, you know, apparently the experts have, and they've told me this, like it's, you're one of the worst on the planet in follow through. Like you shouldn't even dual task, nothing. So I know that I'm bad at follow through. And so think about this, I'm gonna apply this in kind of my realm and then you can see how to, I'll sketch something out and I get to 80%. Then I hand it off to other people who are really good at details and they get it to another 80%. So think about this, you get it to 80% Mm -hmm. and then they take what's left and they improve it another 80%. What's the math on that? We are now at 96%, bam. So pause right there. Now, if we take another week and we tweak it and I'm gonna walk through some um, applicable scenarios here and we just improve it another 80%, do the math on that, we're at 99%. 0.2%. So let's give you a scenario. Let's say you're writing systems as a dental practice in your office 
and you're like, we need a system for financial arrangements. Okay, let's spend 10 minutes right now talking about the outcomes. Here's what I want it to look like. Uh, there's going to be two options. We need to up this. Here's the, here's the metric that needs to be achieved. Let me scribble on a piece of paper. And then you hand it to somebody on your team who does the details and they go, all right, doc, let me take this. I'm going to write this all up and we'll look at it next week. Boom, we're done. We got it to 80%. Then next week, you do a systems review and you take a look at what that team member's done and you go, wow, this is really well written up. Wow, there's a few things on here. Okay, couple things I might change. I would change, we're not gonna do that. Let's change that grammatically to that. Oh, and one more step that we'll put in there, see what I'm doing? I'm improving it another 80% in real time. And then I give it back to the person who just did the second 80% and she or he says, you know what, let me type that up and I'll bring it to you next week. And then you can pause there. Jenny, anything you'd say about getting those first three rounds of 80%? Yeah, I, I think whenever we begin to work on something, our 80%, it's, it's always fairly easy when you're first attacking something because you have good energy to put into it. Right. So by, by sharing this task, be it a financial arrangement document, you know, a scheduling system, what we're able to do is everyone is able to give fresh, good energy to it. And we move really quickly through things because we have good energy. Um, are you, do you know about the law of diminishing returns, Kirk? I do, but enlighten me. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so law of diminishing returns, like I start working on something and it's kind of like a bell curve goes up. I have, I have great, great action. I'm getting a lot of stuff done. I get a lot of stuff done. Then I get up to the top and very quickly I start to go back down. Yeah. And then the energy that I'm putting in becomes wasted energy. So, was, you know, time spent working on a system. I've got great energy. I'm, I'm getting it up there. I get it to 80%. Now I'm stuck in the details. Yep. My time now is not being well spent. And I may actually make it worse because I'm tweaking little things that aren't in my unique ability that I'm not great at. So we need to be willing to hand things off to someone else to give their best energy to it. Um, it's a great system and it's a great way to lean into your team. Absolutely. Now there's a couple of pitfalls that we'll be talking about here in just a second. So, you know, think about this concept and how it can improve your life. You use in vacations, like I just booked a few vacations. We just need to figure out where we're going and get where we're going to stay in place. Bam, 80%. Then I can go back and get the flights later, improve it another 80%. Oh, and by the way, I should probably book the meals. Bam. So I'm, I've touched, I just booked a vacation and that's exactly how I did it. I locked us in. Then I got flights the next day. And then the third night I got all the restaurants ready. So we're at about, we're at about 99% there now i'll touch it one more time and if you touch a process a fourth time and improve it another 80 percent, you are now at 99.84 percent so that fourth time now i've got to book transportation back and forth from the to and from the airport now you guys might say oh i just do that all in one fell swoop well my brain doesn't work that way i got to <laughs> think about the experience and all that kind of stuff but it's not just vacations you think about it in your practice and you think about all of these things now on the other side of it let me tell you about the other side in my journey on this and this is why this is so therapeutic for me i'm an idea guy I love ideas. I live in ideas. I live in the future often. So what I would do was I would come to a team meeting here at Actel on a Monday and I would vomit all, well, vomit ideas, you know, all over everybody because I had so many ideas. And I remember a team member saying to me, gosh, you come in here and the best way to describe it is you pop popcorn every Monday because mm -hmm. you've been to a course or you've been listening to a podcast or you read a book and you're like, pop, 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 pop. You're popping all this popcorn. All this popcorn is now overflowing onto the floor. And we as team members don't even know which ones to pick up. We're actually just waiting for you to stop popping because we're hoping that you'll just run out of corn someday, you know, and then we need to know which 
you know, kernels we can pick up. So you need to understand, like, not every idea is a great one. That's why sometimes I just got to sketch it out. And there are processes in the world like GE's Six Sigma process, where they're improving processes, not by getting them perfect, but by continual process improvement. And they use the same type of thinking. Now, a couple of the pitfalls that you need to be aware of now that you understand the concept is number one, and Dan Sullivan points this out in his book, is the first attempt at anything should never, ever be more than 80%, regardless of the preparation. Now, Jenny knows this, and some of you guys see this, and if you're watching, you can see, I carry around a, a spiral notebook, and I get a new one every single month. And what it is, is if anyone, if I ever lost my backpack, no one could ever read it. It's a bunch of like <laughs> scribbles and graphs and charts and uh, diagrams and like, you know, and it's, it means a lot to me, but I will often just take something, I'll scribble something, I'll do a drawing, I rip it out and then I'll hand it to somebody and go, this is what I'm thinking about. And Jenny, know, you know, we have two of these people on our team in particular. One of them, her name is Chris and another one is Barrett. And I'll often go, this is what I'm thinking. And they're like, what the heck is that? You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, and even Barrett, I poor Barrett because he is a DC on the disc profile. So he thinks only in details and wants to get them done. So he's like, even recently I gave him an idea and he's like, man, I, Ooh, I get where you're going, but I got to get my brain around this. And so I'll often hand those concepts to them and then they'll go to work on them and they'll often find holes in them but get to 80% as fast as possible. And then the second concept, and Jenny, I want you to comment on this, like recognize that 80% is often good enough in 80% of the situations, 80% of the time. Now, I'm not, I'm not like subscribing to mediocrity. That's not what I'm saying. Doctors but always, when I sit, they're like 80%, I can't do 80% I in my office. I'm like, I'm not telling you to do 80. I don't right. want you to go in and do an 80% job on that surgery. I want you to do a hundred percent job on that surgery. Right. But that's 80% of the situations, 80% of the time. Right. There are some instances in which you need to give 110%. Yep. Really? Or a hundred percent. That's why in the other 80%, save your energy, give 80% move through it quickly and let other people help you. And you'll be able to identify holes, identify weaknesses, have someone say, you know what, this is a good idea. Let's take it to here. I'm great with the details. Let me do the math. Right. And that is where you will make progress. Absolutely. Like there's so many different um, scenarios. Like one of them is Dentists just doing a website, you know, they, some, they spend a year trying to make it look pretty. No, get it up there so people can find you. Okay. That's a good start. And then people will start coming in and over time you'll tweak it. So make sure you're hearing this message really clearly. Sometimes you just got to get something on the books and you yep. know, if you're going to show up to the appointment, we're at 80%. You know what? Once we get there, I'll figure out what's going on and then we can improve it another 80%. Uh, if you get new software, are you going to wait till you know 100% about it before you start using it? No, no. No. You know, you're, and, you, you, you'd never start using it. You would never. And, you know, some dentists, I, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I'll never forget. Brian Gray said to me, who's a fabulous dentist out east, he's like, dude, I love perfectionism. I love it, but I've also learned done is better than perfect most times. And I was like, you, I, that was the first time I'd ever heard an, an unbelievable dentist say that. And yep. I thought to myself, you know what? He's giving himself a little bit of grace. And then also, you know, I've had the good fortune of having some great mentors. One, one of them in particular, Dr. Bill Lockard, who... Uh, was an amazing influence at the at the Panky Institute, and he helped me understand something. He said, "You know, perfectionism is actually a deadly disease in dentistry, Kirk." And I was like, "What do you mean by that, Bill?" He's like, "You know, um, excellence was my goal in my career. Perfectionism was God's job." You know, and there were days where things were perfect, but it wasn't really my doing. It might have been a team member's doing, my specialist, or something happened. So oftentimes we plague ourselves with it. It's got to be perfect. No, it's got to get going. And I, I joke, and this isn't, a, this isn't probably going to be super helpful, but ready, aim, 
you know, fire has really worked for me a lot in my career. So sometimes you just got to, got to get started. The, so have it go and then trust that it's going to work out. Totally. Right. And, I th and there's also, don't let perfect get in the way of good. Yes. There's what do you, wait, 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 go back to that. What do you mean by that? Okay. So don't let perfect get in the way of good. It's just, I mean, just the same similar concept or, I mean, that's that, that's that perfectionism being, being deadly because sometimes things are really, really good. Right. And our own gremlins tell us it's not perfect. And so we don't put good into play yep. and good yep. is oftentimes really great for most situations. I don't have a, a hundred percent perfect new patient intake form. We're tweaking it kind of constantly as we learn. Yeah. But if I never, if I said, no, it's not right, we're never going to start using it. Just make those phone calls without any guidelines. It would be a disaster. Yeah. Right. To it, it would, it would, things would fall apart. Yeah. And, and and we learn when we put things into play. And that's a really important part of this. I think that's absolutely brilliant too. And if you're listening to this podcast and you're a dentist, I'm already guessing like you're a lifelong learner. You want to learn. You know, part of this podcast is just about making you better. And you're listening to other dental podcasts is you're a lifelong learner. So once you start embracing the 80% things, you learn things about yourself. You learn things about what you like, what you don't like, and you can keep applying to it. And I promise you the output or the result is things do continuously get better in a way that you could never make them better. Now, another big pitfall, this is a huge one. So let me tell you my journey on this. So I went to strategic coach. I was taught this. I totally embraced it. I freaking loved it. And it took me two years to use it. And I'll tell you why. Because I didn't follow step number three, which is recognize which 80% of a project each person should handle. You know, mm -hmm. I thought I could handle this part and this part. And then I had other people who I'm like, you could handle this part and this part. And they were not the people to handle those parts. And let me explain what you have to do. Here's the solution. So without like overdoing this, there's a solution to it. And it's you have to recognize the value of unique abilities and unique abilities are the things that you have been blessed with and they are, they are unique to you. And so Dan Sullivan, this is his definition. He said they fall into one of four things or all four. And you know, number one, you have a superior skill. Like you start to recognize as you age, like I am really good at this. You know, I'm good at this better than most people I get a chance to meet. The second criteria is you love these activities and you can't get enough of them. We could actually throw 400 of them at you and you'd go, game on, can you give me 500 of these? And the third thing is doing them, when you do do them, it energizes you. And other people are energized by you doing them and your performance. They go, wow, this is really good. And you go, I was so into look at this, this is so fun. And then the fourth criteria is this, is that you keep getting better at them. There's no ceiling to this in your improvement. You know, it's, there's an infinite way for you to get better at this, whatever this is. Now, I don't want to tell you like, oh, you know, me, I figured all of this out and I've mastered all four of these things. I would tell you in my unique ability, which is trying to find a better way and energizing people around a better practice, better life. I'm probably hitting three of those four. You know what I mean? Consistently. I get a lot of energy from speaking and ideas and things that, but I used to try to convince myself I was really good at the details. And another challenge that I made, which was a big leadership mistake I had, which was I gave detail items to people that weren't really great at details. And it wasn't their fault. It's just that I wasn't really paying attention to the second piece of this, which is you got to hand these things to details people in, in a lot of respects, the second 80%. What are your other thoughts, Jenny? When you, when you look at unique ability, like everybody, I think everybody's got a unique ability. Now, it's not 32 things. 
I found out I suck at a lot of things. When I first did this workshop, I came back from the first one and I told everybody at the office, like, I suck at a lot of things. And they said, we, we know. And I was, <laughs> and, and they were like, you know, you had to go away for a workshop to find that. I said, yes, I did. And I realized okay. that. It. Yeah, whatever you paid, it was worth it. And then I realized yeah. I had this unique ability. I, I'm really good at like three things. And so, Jenny, what are your thoughts when you look around the world of dentistry so, and unique abilities? Everyone is everyone is happier when they're operating within their unique abilities. Amen. And I think that's a really important thing because we have days, a lot of days in the dental practice that are hard that are stressful, that we hit the ground running and we don't stop. Right. And if you think about your, your, your unique ability sort of as a rubber band, and when you're within your unique ability, your rubber band is, is whole and it's not stretched. Yeah. As you stretch more and more and more and more out of those places that are not your unique ability, they're strain. Right. Right. And eventually it snaps, it yeah. snaps back and team members have conflict when they're operating out of their, uni out of their unique abilities. Things don't get done. Things fall through the cracks. Um, I've had, I've had docs tell me, you know, I'm nervous about taking something away from someone. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you have a really great conversation with someone about when do you smile in your day? <laughs> When do you find yourself smiling? What are you happy doing? And you're able to find things that are within their job description, within the things that are important for the practice. This doesn't just mean create some random crazy job for someone. It has to be, right? It has to fit within the functional accountability chart and the things that are important for the practice. But, but if you can get them to specialize and focus a little bit more in those things, they're gonna be more productive. They're gonna be happier the whole team is going to be happier when they are operating within that unique ability. You know, I'm super good at entering data into QuickBooks. I hate it. <laughs> I don't want to do it all day, right? Yeah. I'm really, really good at it. I can, I can enter data all day long, but it doesn't fill my cup. It doesn't make me happy. It's not my unique ability. Right. So just because you can do something also, doesn't mean it's your highest and best. I totally agree. Totally agree. And you, so you use the smile analogy too. You know, I, 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 in thinking about what energizes me, I could have two hours of sleep and thinking about a better concept or a new way to do things. I'm actually quite energized by it. Like I could do it and I'm, my, my wife will go, you need sleep. And I'm like, no, I have an idea. And she's like, oh, Lord, okay, here we go. And um, that's an important piece. Another thing is a dentist. So there's, there's a 2.0 to this. The unique ability 2.0 is this. Spending some time and becoming self-aware is one of the most important things you could ever do as a dentist. Um, Gary Vanderchuk, I'm not going to encourage you to do this right now, but one of my favorite videos of all time and it's a very colorful, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't subscribe to the language that he uses, but like he speaks to the USC School of Entrepreneurs. You can look it up. It's like a 45 minute video. It's probably one of my favorite in all of business period. And basically he's telling them how to be successful. And I'll summarize the whole video. He said, I would do this at a very young age, early age. I would figure out what I suck at. I would take every test on the planet. I would have somebody hyper analyze me and my personality and what I'm good at. I'd figure that out as fast as possible and I would go all chips in on my strengths and I would completely agree. It took me until about 40 to figure out what I was even halfway good at and then start to put the chips in the middle. So don't do what I did. So do that faster. And then Dan Sullivan 2.0 said, once you figure out your unique ability and start using 80%, what you do is you find other people that have unique abilities in the things that your business needs help with. And what they do is they take it to a whole nother level. Now, what Jenny's talking about is absolutely true. And you're a dentist. You're probably stressed about this. You're like, oh my gosh, I got these you know, great team members that have been here for a long time. I'm worried about, you've already seen evidence of this. You've seen where somebody's really good at something. And when you get it back, it's better than you would ever imagine. They're really energized by it. They could probably present and, you know, 
sell dentistry better than you. They can probably get things done better than you. Pay attention to what's working because when you put that person in that seat, they're energized by it. And you can see their eyes light up. And like Jenny said, you can see the smile come alive in what they do. It's crazy cool. You know, and then once you figure those pieces out, now this is a lifetime journey. So there's two more components to this I want to share so that if you're listening, you can pay attention and just check all five of these boxes. And I'm telling you, it's going to change your life is just get into leaning into the first 80% over and over and over again, rinse and repeat and 80%, 80%, 80%. Now in our coaching company, this has also changed our lives. The cool thing about what we do now that's crazy different is we do um, planning every 13 weeks. We also do this with our clients. We do an action planner. We figure out what are the single most important priorities in our company, and we go after them. So there's only three to five every quarter. There's only three to five KPIs. And so think about this. I get to think about what I'm going to move to 80% for 13 weeks before I present it to the team. They're not getting it for the first time. You know, after I've been thinking in about a weekend, I give it to Barrett. I give it to Chris. I'll give it to Jenny. I'll give it to our track. You know, we have a team called the Traction Team because we love that book so much. And they can work on it and really improve it another 80%, another 80% before it actually goes to the team. And the team starts to believe in what we're doing. And that's why at the end, the last concept is this, is like focusing on 80%. So this is the summary of the whole thing. Focus on 80% all the time. Don't focus on 100%. Focus on 80%. Okay, 80%. Today, 80%. Tomorrow, 80%. Thursday, 80%. Friday, 80%. If you keep doing that, you're going to see bigger and bigger collective results as a team, as an individual. Your confidence will skyrocket. It'll absolutely change your life. So, Jenny, any other thoughts you have on 80% approach? No, I mean, the 80% approach just fits so well with one of the mantras that we all use here. It's really about progress and not about perfection. Absolutely. So make sure you recognize those are your two biggest enemies and you got to push them back by using this incredible tool called the 80% approach. Now, again, it's a great tool. Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach uh, named that. So I'm going to encourage you to reach out, get his book. It is fantastic. He also has some recordings on it. You can uh, see all that. And if you're a dentist, you're kind of struggling. You're like, gosh, I can't get anything done and you need some help and you haven't made any progress, don't do that anymore, okay? You can reach out, and that's one of the things we do as a coaching company is like, you gotta do two things in a dental practice. You gotta create predictability, and you gotta get progress going in your practice. And so if you're struggling to get some progress going, you can see this gives you a little glimpse of how we do it. You can reach out to us at actdental.com. We'll help you create a better practice and a better life so that you can see your practice getting better a little bit every single week and you could be surrounded by great thinkers like Jenny who you know Jenny one of the things you do is you make people get things done which I absolutely love you're an accountability coach an accountability coach what the heck it's does that mean I don't even know what that means we all need yes Kirk needs an accountability coach yes. we all need accountability coaches we're busy dental practices are busy and it's hard sometimes to keep up with things um and I get to come in and say, Hey, we said we were going to do this. Let's hop to it. Yeah. What's the plan? Let's get it to 80% um, and help teams find their unique abilities. One of my favorite things is when I get to see a team member find their unique ability and thrive in it. Um, it's really a special moment. It's a special moment because not only do you change their lives, but you're changing everybody's lives at the practice. <laughs> and I'll leave you with one last thought. Think about this. Today is as young as you're ever going to be. So you could say, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. No, you got to get going. Like, improve it today because you get one shot at this thing called life. And if you can get it moving in the right direction and you can go to work going, I like this. And now I actually love this. And you feel like you're making progress. It's a good thing. So thank you guys right. for listening. Jenny, thank you for being on. Keep us in, yeah, keeping us sure. on the rails here. <laughs> love being here with you. It's always fun. It is fun. And hope you guys enjoy your day. Stay tuned. We're going to send you more and more tools like this so that you guys can create a better practice and a better life. So hope you guys Amen. enjoy your day. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.